This is a first video for skeletal system and we're going to look at the internal anatomy of a long bone. This diagram is in your binder um, and also in the book, labeled of course. Uh, first of all, we want to go through two major areas. There are two major areas of every bone that is called a long bone. And this is a typical bone that you might find in the arm, leg, um, major parts of the skeleton. Each bone has two ends or epiphyses. Epiphyses, S-E-S at the end is plural, epiphysis, we use that term when we're talking about singular or just one. I remember E, epiphysis, and E, end. So one epiphysis would be proximal and one would be distal depending on where, how the bone was positioned in the skeleton. The middle, longest midsection part, is called the diaphysis. So now we're going to concentrate on the epiphysis. First of all, look at the epiphysis, or the end. You'll notice that it has a certain texture. We call this spongy bone because it has the appearance of a sponge. It's lightweight. Next, the epiphysis contains red marrow. So in the spaces between the um, calcium hard parts of the spongy bone, there are blood making cells. These would be stem cells to connect with something else we learned before. Also in the epiphysis, there's some areas that have a slightly different color and texture and they're called epiphyseal plates. They're commonly called growth plates. Um, this is where sizable areas of new bone is created. So for a toddler uh, to have bones that develop into the size of your bones, say a teenager or a full-grown adult, there has to be a lot of mitosis, there has to be a lot of new bone created. So eventually when you're full, uh, you're full height, then these become inactive. Okay, now we're going to go into the diaphysis. Look at the middle part of the diagram. We're going to go through... Um, some characteristics of the diaphysis. There's an outer covering called the periosteum. Peri means surrounding. And blood, uh, blood vessels and nerves enter and leave the bone through this area. Um, we're going to look at some long bones from animals in class and you'll see tiny little holes where blood vessels and nerves entered the bone when it was living. Most of the diameter of the diaphysis area is called compact bone. It's very, very dense. It's way more dense than spongy bone. We're going to study this in detail in video number two. The center, the very center of the diaphysis is called the medullary cavity. Cavity implies that something's empty, but this cavity is not empty. Instead, it contains yellow marrow. Yellow marrow is basically fat. So adults have some normal fat inside their bones. In children, this was red marrow because children have a need to make additional blood cells as they develop. Finally, if we were to take a cross section, if we were to cut through the diaphysis, kind of like you would cut a tree trunk and then look at the inside, this is what it would look like. The compact bone is around the outside there is a little bit of spongy bone that's not as dense on the inside and the very center is empty and this is where you would have had yellow or red marrow. The next video will cover the compact bone in a microscopic um, detail.